Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Kay Cote, and I'm coming at you here from Austin, Texas. We are here in Central Texas with our Action Coach uh, platform. And today I have Will Deloney, founder of Pixelated Ideas on the show. <laughs> he is our guest. And today we're going to be talking about his business, his business uh, journey to business ownership, as well as the challenges and best practices he's learned along the way and give you a real sneak peek into what it's like to own and operate a business. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe for more episodes just like this one. Well, welcome, Will. It's nice to have you on. I would love to hear a little bit about you and your business. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, Pixelated Ideas, kind of the journey has been a long one and a somewhat interesting one. I think you know, the way to start talking about pixelated ideas is when I was in grad school. I went to graduate school at Indiana University in Bloomington. And at the time, it was a very forward thinking program. I got a master's in immersive mediated environments, which is kind of a fancy way of talking about interactive storytelling and really storytelling for the Internet. And this was, you know, the days before YouTube. So we were creating flash players to play videos on the internet. And I was always, you know, from day one, very interested in the storytelling aspect of it and like putting the storytelling before the platform versus the opposite where the platform is dictating what the stories can tell. Um, and so I, I had a lot of amazing opportunities in graduate school. I got to work on a documentary about John Mellencamp, and that was really my introduction into kind of professional documentary filmmaking. And um, that was a great experience just, I, you know, because it was, I got to do everything. Uh, I got to shoot, I got to edit, I got to help write. Um, and, you know, really was involved in all aspects of that documentary. So that was a really great kind of introduction um, into that format. And my master's project was a documentary about bass and low frequency sounds. And I didn't want it to just be a documentary. I wanted it to kind of be an immersive experience. And so... We did things like we would have parties and have, you know, low riders and cars come and give displays of powerful bass and you would get to experience what that bass felt, look, felt like and looked like. And so it was really um, an educational experience in like learning how to tell stories in multiple formats. You know, there was the documentary, there was live events, we did zines, you know, we did posters. And so um, that was really kind of the inception of Pixelated Ideas. There was a group of friends that kind of came together and all worked on that. And so from day one, Pixelated Ideas has always been like a creative collective of filmmakers and writers and graphic designers and um, you know, people that are like-minded and creative and wanting to tell stories. Um, and so from there, after graduate school, I went to New York for a handful of years, um, five years from 2004 to 2009. I was in New York and basically all of that group of people also moved to New York. And so pixelated ideas kind of really professionally doing our own thing started in New York where um, we did a lot of music videos, but we, we had this idea that we wanted to do DVD extras. And this was at the time when DVDs were huge. This is showing my age, but we did a lot of DVD work. We did, um, a DVD with Lou Reed and Lou Reed performing Tai Chi and doing a Tai Chi DVD. Uh, we did a lot of DVDs for rappers and hip hop artists. One of our favorites is Cool Keith. We did Cool Keith's DVD back in the day. Um, he's an artist that goes by a lot of different aliases, including Dr. Octagon and 
Black Elvis, um, as well as a whole bunch of others. And so um, that was where we kind of professionally as pixelated ideas worked on a number of projects. Um, and I, you know, being a creative and being a filmmaker and being a production person would often get pulled into, you know, full-time jobs. And so I worked at MTV for a number of years and MTVU, which was their college network, um, where all most dorm rooms in college campuses across the U.S. had this MTVU channel. And it was the one that actually still played music videos, but they would have these little interstitial segments where we would interview bands and you know, shoot band performances and work with artists and writers. And um, so that that was kind of the New York branch of pixelated ideas. And then fast forward to 2013 is when I landed back in Austin. Um, I worked in Austin from 2000 to 2002 as a stockbroker, um, kind of before I made that career transition into a more creative endeavor but since 2013 um you know pixelated has been in austin and i've been in austin and so um you know we work on everything from brand films and tv tv productions and documentaries documentaries is just something that's a passion of mine and i'm always working on it one way or another um so that's kind of the quick snapshot of how pixelated has developed and grown over the years to get us here to austin to where we are today what an incredible journey i am sitting here like nodding along because i remember mtvu when i was in school oh that's so cool it's so cool how this like it really comes full circle so um as a creative and as an entrepreneur that's got to be such a fun fulfilling venture so i'd like to dive right in and kind of get into the meat and potatoes of your business um, what's your current ownership structure look like? Are you the sole owner um, or do you have investors involved? What's that look like? Yeah, I am the sole proprietor and it's very much kind of on a per contract basis as to how I hire people. Um, and I definitely have creative partners that I lean on for everything. Uh, One's based in New York, um, another's based in LA, and then another kind of very close creative partner of mine is here in Austin. And so um, I am the sole proprietor, but, you know, every time I get a new contract or partner with a client, I kind of fulfill the roles as needed. Um, And that really varies, um, you know, it depends on, you know, what type of project we're working on. If it's uh, if it's a documentary, it's, I work with writers. I work with sound mixers and sound designers. I hire camera operators and production crews. And that's one of the things that I really take pride in is because I've had to move so much, I've really maintained a network of creatives that I enjoy working with. And so, you know, New York, L.A., Texas, Arkansas, all across the U.S., I've worked with various crews and creatives, and I've always maintained relationship with those people that I've enjoyed working with. And so um, that's one thing that Pixelated Ideas is very good at. It's like you can have a project in Iowa or you know, Kansas or, you know, anywhere across the U.S. And we we have this built to scale model so that like if it's a smaller production and a smaller budget, you know, we can be scrappy and kind of use a more skeleton crew, um, you know, to stay in budget and make sure we deliver that project in a timely budget friendly fashion. But then, you know, we work on these other projects where, there are big, bigger budgets by nature. Um, and, you know, we can work with people all over the U.S. and 
even internationally at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Our latest project, we interviewed 88 artists in 22 different countries. And those are all artists that, you know, I maintain relationships with and enjoy working with. And, um, you know, right now we're doing a theatrical run that's international on this latest documentary that we've worked on the past four years and it's been amazing. Um, we have screenings come up and coming up in Vegas and London and Croatia and Japan and G Germany. And so it's very cool to kind of be able to talk to people all over the world and get your, you know, documentary or, you know, brand film or what, whatever it is all over the world and do that in a very organic, cool, fun way. Oh, you live in the creative entrepreneur's dream. That is so inspiring to me. Um, do you currently have employees like under your belt or teammates? How does that structure work? Um, I don't have any full-time employees. Um, I take it on a per project basis. And so, um, you know, most of the time, the projects that come through the door I'm working with at least five to seven different contractors and that's kind of at all levels. I mean, there's assistant editors and editors and producers and writers. Um, and so it's pretty much me kind of maintaining the day-to-day -day business aspects of it, um, which is honestly kind of like the most challenging part. The creative part is the fun part. <laughs> um, kind of the day-to-day -day business and making sure that, you know, the wheels stay on is is the less fun part. Um, but it's something as an entrepreneur and specifically as a sole proprietor, it's just kind of the necessary kind of aspect of the business is, you know, the the dry, boring stuff of getting contracts generated and getting those over to an attorney to make sure that the contracts look good and, um, you know, paying invoices and, you know, keeping websites maintained and kind of all of that stuff isn't necessarily my favorite part, but it is kind of part of the necessary journey of being an entrepreneur and being a sole proprietor is, if you don't do those things, nobody else does. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's it's up to me to make sure that those things get taken care of. Oh, so, so true. That is a, a great advice for any creative entrepreneur out there for sure. And it is it is part of it to, to keep the business afloat. Uh, so I'd love to dive into um, who do you primarily serve? You know, you said you work project project based. So who, if I were in the audience, how would I know I'd be a great client for you? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think, um, you know, first and foremost, pixelated ideas has always been like an idea generator. And so like, if you're a brand or, you know, you have an idea for a TV show, or you have an idea for a documentary, but you really don't know where to go with that idea, we are a good place to come to because we love the ideation of it. We love the development of it. Um, and that's one of the things that we really enjoy and we take pride in, but we also have fun doing it with our partners. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer in working in the creative industry, like the creative process should be fun. Um, if you're not having fun, I just don't think you're taking the right approach to it. Um, and that's not to say it's not hard work and it's not difficult um, and that it's easy peasy, but um, I believe it should be fun. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we often take the seed of an idea and figure out how to make it the best idea it can be. <laughs> Excuse me. So... <clears throat> I'm going to take a sip of water really fast. So our clients vary. Um, we've worked with like Tito's Vodka and we were kind of the go-to go kind of production team and creative team for Tito's 
for a number of years. And, you know, they would often have like, again, the seed of an idea of like, we know we want to do something that's based around our summer campaign. And so we want it to kind of have a summer theme. And, you know, they'll often have an idea of like, where they might want these things to live like this will live on our youtube or this will live on our social channels but that's again kind of where we can come in and really kind of help develop like what that looks like and what that means so if this is a youtube campaign what can we do to make this the most youtube friendly kind of production and deliverable so that it's kind of hitting their goals and that's often you know, part of the process too, is like really kind of digging in and f figuring out what are the goals? Like what's, sure. what's our metrics to success on this project? And that really often kind of helps kind of inform what the creative looks like. And so, you know, we're pretty nimble in that, like, A, we can work with a variety of budgets, but B, it's like, you know, we can kind of really help shape and mold the creative so that, you know, the client is getting the most bang for their buck. And so, um, you know, kind of maybe a shorter answer to your question is we work with everybody from networks, you know, big networks like Viacom to individual YouTube channels to brands, mm -hmm. um, you know, where we'll do things for their YouTube or we'll create a brand film. We're currently working on a brand film for somebody here in Austin called The Grand Lady. Um, and they're a wedding events space and they have this amazing, beautiful mansion and this gorgeous property where they, you know, have weddings. And so we're telling their story and like how they developed and created the grand lady and how it became into being. And they're a super cute, awesome couple. And, you know, they're telling their story of, you know, the grand lady and, how that came to be and, you know, how they became a success. Um, yeah. And, and, and again, it's like, we don't always necessarily deliver, deliver videos. Sometimes we help develop scripts or, mm -hmm. um, you know, do things more on the pre-production creative side where we'll generate, you know, outlines and kind of production plans and help, you know, develop, productions and ideas so that they can kind of get done in a creative, cool, efficient manner. Wow. That sounds incredible. I love that you kind of like told a story about your business. That That is super cool. And I'm always curious too. It sounds like you're, you know, building great relationships with your clients. Um, how do you put yourself out there in marketing? That's one thing I want to dive into. Uh, so what are some of your marketing pursuits like do you have a budget for marketing typically or how do you how do how do you put yourself out there uh that's that's another good question that it's like the answer is kind of all over the place and you know to be totally frank and you know truthful it's our our most successful form of marketing is word of mouth um, and it's developing those relationships and having kind of a good working relationship with our clients so that they are like, hey, this went super awesome for us. And we'd like to recommend you to somebody else that might be looking to do a similar thing. Um, this film, this documentary that we've been working on the last four years is the first film that we've done where we are responsible for figuring out what distribution looks like. Mm -hmm. And so marketing of that film has been unique in that, like, it's not something that we're doing for somebody else's platform. It's something that we're figuring out for ourselves. And so marketing on that front has been really interesting in that we have this goal and our goal is like, we really want, you know, international distribution we feel this obligation where because it's artists all over the world that we want to make sure it can be seen by people all over the world mm -hmm. and so you know marketing that has been very unique and we're doing like I mentioned these 
theatrical screenings, which each screening kind of takes its own marketing and promotion. And so that's been unique. And some of it has been completely crowdfunded. There's mm -hmm. a very kind of active community based around this documentary. And the community has really rallied around the project and helped supported the project. Um, and then, you know, the obvious kind of answer that everybody seems to be kind of excited about and trying to really figure out what the best way is, is through social channels. Um, and that's everything from Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and, and other, you know, less, le less known platforms um, and really figuring out like, what's the, like what's the strategy there um because each of those is kind of a different unique audience in its own way i mean there's plenty of crossover but um you know the facebook group is different than the instagram group and how they engage with those platforms is different yeah. and so marketing you know on each different social channel i believe takes a unique strategy to do that well mm -hmm. um and so it, it's definitely all over the place and it varies by project, but um, that's another place where we really try to be kind of laser focused on the project and what is best for the project to make sure that those marketing dollars and those promotional funds are being used in the best way possible. Oh, definitely. Well, it's been so fun, like learning about your business and how it's structured but from your marketing. And I'd love to dive in to a little bit about you. I know you touched briefly in the beginning of the conversation, but I want to know what was it like for you when you uh, chose to go into business for yourself as opposed to like, say, joining another production crew or, you know, what was that transition like for you? Well, um, the transition kind of you know, starting my own business was all these factors just kind of happened at the same time. It was kind of, you know, a storm of all these different scenarios that kind of really came into place at one time. Um, I had moved from LA back to Austin in 2013, and I had been working for a production company for a couple of years. And basically, I moved to Austin to kind of help oversee this production team. And it was a team of, you know, roughly 15 people. And um, we were the video team for a company that produced thousands of videos. Um, mm -hmm. And that's really where that lesson of, you know, built to scale and what that means. It's like, you know, producing 20 videos takes a certain type of workflow and a certain number of people to do that versus like, here's 2000 videos that we need to produce over the next couple of months. And so I, 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 I really got a great kind of firsthand experience and firsthand lesson of what that looks like and, and how you do that. And so in 2013, they were headquartered in Austin, but they had this office. I'm sorry, they were headquartered in Santa Monica, but they had this office in Austin and they decided to close the Austin office in 2013. And they mm -hmm. offered me the opportunity to come back to Santa Monica and work out of the Santa Monica office. And that's when I kind of made the decision of like, I'm going to branch out and do my own thing and I'm going to start my own business. Um, and so that lesson of like what it looks like to, you know, get incorporated and, you know, build your brand and, you know, the, the graphic design of your brand and where your brand's going to live and how do you get your brand out in the world? That was all just kind of a crash course based out of necessity of like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do all of this at one time um, and so that kind of decision in, in 2013 of like, okay, I'm going to take pixelated ideas and I'm going to do that full time. Um, there were so many lessons and so many things where you try and fail 
or something works. And so you're like, well, this worked and this didn't. So I'm going to put a little more energy into this and then figure out why that didn't work. Um, that happened all very, very quickly for me. Um, and, you know, it, it was a decision I made that wasn't necessarily an easy decision, but it's something looking back on that I'm very glad that I took that route and um, I wouldn't have it any other way at this point. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, that's not to say again, like, I still work as like, uh, you know, a freelancer individually, like I can go off and work as a story producer or a post producer and oversee edits um, and do that and still try to keep kind of pixelated moving forward and work mm -hmm. on the projects that like I want to work on and the people that I work closely with get excited about because you know, that's something about working in the creative industry is like it really takes, you know, a certain sort of excitement and commitment to kind of see a project through to fruition. And if you don't have that kind of um, energy behind it, it, it's really hard to get it across the finish line because, you know, there's no creative project that is done at the scale that I do where I can do it by myself. It's something that is always going to take others. And so I, I really kind of focus on the types of projects where creatively it's going to be fulfilling. And just from a storytelling perspective, that it's a story that I want to tell. And it's a story that the team wants to tell so that it's something that like, okay, this is something that's new. We're excited about it. Let's do this. And so, yeah. That's really cool and very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, we've covered a lot of ground in this conversation. It's been so much fun picking your brain, hearing about your business. And I'd love to go into a few rapid fire questions. Sure. Um, these are fun. They're very um, top of mind. First thing that comes to your mind is your answer. Um, are you ready for some rapid fire? Let's do it. I'm in the hot seat. <laughs> All right. Question number one. What is a key to success for you? The key to success is really just having fun. I, I mean, I kind of talked about this briefly earlier, but like I I just my transition into the career that I'm in now, I was not having fun in my previous job. And this is one where it's important to me that I have fun. And so like in it, you know, most business owners would probably not agree with me saying this, but like even more than the financial rewards, I want to have fun working on the projects that we take on. And so for me, that is like, that's success. If I take on a project and it was enjoyable and I had fun doing it, I believe I've been successful. Definitely agree with you there. Next question is, what is one piece of advice that you have for other business owners? Ooh, one piece, one piece of advice for other business owners, I think is, you know, really figuring out like, what is it that's important to you from a brand perspective? Um, and that can mean so many different things. I mean, that can mean, um, you know, doing pro-social work and raising awareness for other causes, um, which is something that, you know, is important to me. A lot of the projects that I work on are based around mental health and um, even more specifically like children's mental health and um, mental health for artists. Um, the, the, the documentary and film I think that I keep referencing, but I, I don't know that I've called it by name, but it's called Sticker Movie. And it's a documentary about stickers in the streets. Um, and one of the things we talk about is like how sticker art for so many artists is so valuable to their mental health. Um, and that's something, you know, as a business owner, you know, I think there's so many different things going on in the world. Um, and not to make anything a partisan issue, you know, it's it's about like what's important to you 
Um, because one way or another, you know, the question of like, what is important to you as a business owner is going to come. And if you don't answer that question from day one, you may have to answer it further on down the road. But, you know, being be thinking about like, OK, as a business, what is important to us moving forward um, and what is it, you know, what is our mission as a business so that we make sure that our brand is in line with our mission? Um, yeah, that might not have been the shortest answer to the rapid fire question, but it's an answer. It's a great answer. And our final question here. If you, um, or actually, no, we have two more. The one before this, um, what is a piece of content? This could be like a book, anything that you're taking in right now, podcast, anything that has uh, impacted you? Yeah, I hope this isn't too cliche, um, but there's a book called Tools for Titans. And um, it's all these industry leaders that talk about things that have helped them in their personal in their personal lives and in their professional lives. And it's been super fascinating. And what's kind of really interesting about the book is there seems to be like a lot of commonalities to all these industry leaders where they do specific things and like all of them do these specific things. Um, and so for me, it's been very like educational and eye opening and interesting where I'm like, hmm. I'm going to try this, like all these other very successful people across so many different industries, you know, it's the industries all are all over the place, but they're all doing, you know, daily activities that have helped them in their, you know, personal and professional lives. And it's a book and, and you know, it's not a new book and it's probably been mentioned to so many business leaders, but um, for me, it's something that it's a giant book too. It's like, this thick so I'll always just kind of pick it up and you know read a few pages and kind of take in little tidbits here and there where I'll try to incorporate different things into my life and see you know what that does for me on both the personal and professional level now oh, that sounds like a great book that I got to grab too um so yeah final question if you had to choose only one area of business that you could immediately improve on tomorrow what would it be um, I mean, probably the organizational day to day things. It's things that like I always kind of put off until the very last minute where I'm like, now it's due. I've got to get it done. Um, so being a little bit more proactive in kind of those day to day tasks, as well as I mean, you know, whenever you get into a project, especially one that you're really, you know, excited about and motivated about, I'm very much an all in type of person. And, and, you know, even like if I work on a documentary about a certain subject, I get very immersed in that subject. Mm -hmm. And so I can kind of often get laser focused on something. And so I know that one of the things that I'm actively trying to better myself on is just balancing the tasks that are needed to successfully run a business. And so, you know, one of those things is generating new business. And, you know, if that's through marketing or through outreach and figuring out like what that is to generate new business, I, I, I really am trying to kind of better myself and balancing like, so that I'm not just like, oh, I'm in creative production mode. And I'm not focusing on, you know, developing new business and really trying to make sure that, you know, to, to run a successful business, you can't, you know, pay attention to only one place and not pay attention to another. It's really about balancing those things. And yeah. so that's something that I'm really trying to better myself and the team on is like, how do we make sure we're doing all of the things we need to be doing and applying the right amount of attention and love to all of those things so that we're not like, oh, this project's over. Now it's back to just doing new project development, um, you know, trying to maintain that balance so that, you know, there's an equilibrium to the business. Mm, that's really great advice. And this has been such a great interview. I thank you so much, Will, for sharing these wisdom nuggets with us today. And um, I would like to plug people in. How can they find you? How can they connect with your business? Share all the things. 
Yeah, um, pixelatedideas.com is our, you know, main website that, um, as always, I should update more frequently, but it's a good snapshot of kind of the work that we do and what we're working on now. Um, stickermovie.com is the latest project that I'm really excited about, and I'm traveling around the country and across um, Europe doing theatrical screenings of that project. That's another great place to kind of just see what's going on with that project specifically. And then on Instagram, Will Deloney and Sticker Movie there. Um, those are the kind of best places to see what I've got going. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited to have people connect with you. And our final question for today, Will, is what is most inspiring to you today? Oh, wow. Um, what is most inspiring to me? I, I think finding people that are artistically expressing themselves in fulfilling ways is is so inspiring to me. Um, I, I do get to work with a lot of artists and musicians and people that um, are creative and getting to see them express themselves and um, new creative ways is super inspiring to me. Um, I'm not a music, I'm not a musician, but whenever I get to work with a musician and see their process is, is so inspiring to me and like really gives me kind of the creative inspiration to kind of find new ways at looking at things. And so finding other artists that are actively putting out art and actively putting out music and films um is very inspiring to me and and something as simple as going to like the movie theater and watching a movie on the big screen i find inspiration from and and is often something i have to remind myself of if i if i start to get feeling burnt out or i i lack inspiration I really need to remind myself to plug in to others that are doing things that I find inspiring. And um, it's getting more and more difficult to do that in person where you're connecting with these people in person. And that's another thing that I find really inspiring is just connecting with people in person and talking to others that are doing creative, inspiring work and getting to kind of see what they're doing. But that connection on a personal level, I find so much inspiration from. And, and I, I, you know, I think it's the sign of the times. Um, I have two young children and I see their lives compared to my life when I was their age. And it's like the, uh, will or the desire to leave the house and just go do something and connect with friends and connect with others outside of the house seems to be more and more challenging. And it's something that I believe is so important, but I believe technology is only going to make that connection more and more difficult. And mm -hmm. so that's one of the things that I actively look for and try to do is like, how can I create events or art shows or, you know, different things that bring people together in, in an actual physical space. Um, and I find so much inspiration in that. So it's something that is a very top of mind goal for me. And mm -hmm. like, it's something that keeps me inspired. And whenever those things happen or wh whenever I go to events or movies and I connect with other people, it really is inspirational for me. Oh, uh, well, that is so, that's inspiring me. And so thank you for this, your time today, Will. It's been so great just learning about you and your business and how you're, you know, fostering the creative community as well. So thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Kay. I really appreciate it.